Hello, everyone. Welcome. Um, so this is the session um, that lots of people have been waiting for. Um, so timing wise, as hopefully people have understood, um, the timing of this session is based on my travel plans, not that person's travel plans, that person being Raphael Orta, who is the CEO of Capture One. So I'm sure people have got lots of questions. We're not going to waste too much time um, on intro stuff. So let's press the button and see if he's still there. There he is. Um, hello, hey, Raphael. Cool. Um, so you're in Copenhagen right now in your I office. I am, I am. I've been here for the last couple of years since I joined Capture One. Cool. Um, so we're going to run through today, um, as we, we sort of promised. So we've got some pre-sent uh, in questions. So I can tell you now, um, thank you, Simon, Andrew, Paul, Marius, Ernst, Alan, Lisa, Nicholas, Mike, Wilfried, Mark, Graham, Raymond, Irwin, Pass I've run out of time. Um, there's a lot of people that sent questions in. But uh, what we've done is we've sort of grouped them together into themes and, um, and and sort of topics, and we will cover as much as we can over the next hour. So Raphael's given us the, the hour, um, and to answer the question that JD's just seen, I've just seen in the comments: Does unfiltered mean questions or answers? It means both. Um, so Raphael will give you as straight an answer as is legally possible, I guess. Um, but from that, um, hopefully we'll get um, get some of your questions and queries covered, and we'll get um, we'll get into not only um, software stuff but also the company of Capture One and all the other stuff that that goes with that. So, before we go into that, I think it's probably worthwhile doing a bit of an intro into you, Raphael. So, Raphael person, um, not just CEO. Um, so in terms of your background and all that sort of stuff, um, do you want to give us the, I guess, the elevator pitch, as it were, for you? For sure, for sure. So, so firstly, uh, Paul, thank you so much for, for having me here. Uh, you know, for the last couple of years, every time that I speak to you, it's been incredibly insightful, and I'm very grateful for that. And it's really great to, to be with you and your community. So, so thanks a lot for that. Uh, so yeah, like a couple of years ago, I joined Capture One as the, the CEO uh, to lead Capture One as, a, as an independent company. Uh, so my, my background, I, I'm originally from Venezuela, if anyone is wondering about the, the accent, uh, and I'm a computers engineer. I'm one of those people who had a, a, an interest in technology since I was a very young child, and um, uh, as a result of that, it kind of felt like inevitable that I was going to end up working in software, and that was 25 years ago. Uh, the first third of my career, uh, I was developing software. Uh, after that, I studied business. And I pivoted into a product management uh, career and eventually a general management uh, career. Uh, big chunk of that in e-commerce. So I spent 10 years at eBay and a couple of years uh, at Tesco. And I spent a couple of years at Money Supermarket, which is a fintech uh, in, the, in the UK. Uh, and following that, I came here and I joined uh, Capture One. Uh, and um, the, so Denmark is for me and, and my family. It's our fifth uh, international relocation. We left. You'll say, uh, let's, um, there's there's your clan, as it were. Exactly. Um, well, there, there's one missing there. My my oldest who lives in LA, but those are the youngest two, and my wife. Uh, so yeah, we've acclimatized quite well. <laughs> Sorry. You've acclimatized quite well by the look of it. Indeed, indeed, uh, and uh, and we and we've lived in many different countries. And uh, you know, fun fact about the family is. Uh, each one of the kids and the dog were born in a in a different country. So, you know, Capture One was as much a new professional experience for me as much as a personal adventure. And there you go. We've uh, we've fully embraced uh, the Danish way of life with the with the cargo bike. Yeah. So, for those people that don't um, don't know what that is, basically in Denmark. Um obviously a huge cycling community but more importantly you don't just carry your cargo in a bucket you also bung your family in and take them wherever you're going to uh, yeah yeah it is it is super fun I, I i ride uh i ride that bike pretty much every day i take my kids to school and uh and it's it's a it's a huge part of the of the adventure and the experience of living here and and so part of that i mean obviously um you know you've got sort of family so these are photographs that you've taken we'll come to that in a second yes. but so your experience has been worldwide um and so copenhagen in in your view compared to other places you lived how what's the what are the pros and cons it's a, it's an amazing city where to live especially for you know people with a family it's uh it's a very manageable city it's super safe super clean everything works 
Uh, so, so it's got you know a lot of the benefits of being in a in a capital in a, in a metropolitan city without some of the downsides of very big cities. We also lived in London previously, you know, amazing energy, you know, huge city. Uh, but also, you know, for a family, it can be sometimes a little bit uh, complicated. And yeah. uh, the you know the Danish culture is 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 incredibly friendly. Like everyone speaks intimidatingly perfect English. Uh, so it's been, you know, it's been a great place where to uh, insert ourselves and learn about a, a new culture. And, you know, like you, you can see that one of my children, my son Daniel, is a teenager. Uh, it's an incredibly safe place where to let a teenager have a public transport pass and just like be very independent. And all, at the same time, it's very safe for that. And and so and just touching on that. So for those that don't know, um, Raphael also takes pictures just like you guys do. Um, so these are some of his shots. So Raphael's on glass. Um, so you, you guys can search him out. Um, but you know, one of the things, in fact, that's this is the Capture One team, right? Um, out that's of right. Copenhagen. That's right. Pride, Pride Parade Copenhagen last year. Cool. Um, so and we'll come on to this in a second in terms of the makeup of people within Capture One, but, you know, it's fair to say that everyone within Capture One is focused on photography in some way, shape or form. Um, some people from an artistic perspective, some people from a technical perspective, but the bias has sort of shifted to being absolutely engaged with photography, not just code, essentially. Yeah, that's right. So, so one of our values is empower photographers, uh, and it's something that we're incredibly proud of. Uh, a a la very large percentage of the company are very accomplished photographers. Some of them uh, are still take gigs. You know, some of them are wedding photographers, and they will do like four to six of those gigs a year. Uh, and everyone participates in our monthly photography competition, uh, and and it's an environment that that really nurtures that and it nurtures it from many, many different angles. So, it, you know, on, on the one hand, just, you know, learning about photography, learning to appreciate photography. Uh, and, you know, one of the things that is really fascinating is like any given day, you will just see people walking up and down the corridors with cameras in their hands, color cards, etc. So it's uh, something that runs very, very deep in the in the DNA uh, of the of the company. And and that stuff. So you know, there is you with your propeller hat on, um, joining yeah. in. Um, but that sort of DNA thing, it, it's fair to say, from what you and I have talked about um, over the last couple of years, that this team has grown quite a lot um, since you sort of stepped through the door. Um, so where, where yeah. are you? Where are you at at the moment in terms of that team compared to what you inherited? Yeah, so, us? so so Capture One became an independent company in January of 2020, and today we're 175 people. Uh, the majority of us were based uh, here in Copenhagen. We also have a tech hub in uh, in Athens, uh, and uh, about 100 of the 175 have joined in the last uh, year and a half. Uh, so uh, you know, aside from uh, all of the you know admin and process and systems piece of uh, establishing you know a, a business like Capture One as an independent company, uh, we've done a lot of hiring uh, in the last uh, couple of years, uh, and it's been really great. Like it, it has meant that we have brought uh, you know a huge diversity of backgrounds and experiences uh, into the company and uh, and a fantastic uh, energy into Capture One. Nice. So with all that happy background, um, let's get on to questions. Um, so we've got some that have been sent in uh, beforehand, which we'll, um, which we'll bring up on the screen. For those of you that are watching live, you are welcome to put in uh, any questions that you've got. We may not get to everything. We may not get to every one. Um, and there's a couple of things that, you know, we haven't talked about. The, there's a, maybe an elephant in the room somewhere um, that I can't quite see. But we may want to touch on um, ah the subject of licensing, um, and uh, starting obviously... with the softballs. Well, you know it's it's unfiltered. So um, let's you know let's let's uh, call a spade a spade as it were. And licensing has changed. Um, so you know especially given the timing of this session. So at the end of last year, you guys um, announced a change to licensing. Um, it was met with let's call it mixed reaction because it, it was you know if we talked about this before but if you were a subscriber you didn't even notice anything had changed um if you were on a perpetual license things did change or things are going to change I think it's fair to say um so i guess the the first question from from sort of the wider um sense of all the direct questions that i got to sort of summarize is why um, well, why, why the change from a consumer point of view? Some people were in a place of I was quite happy 
carrying on as we were. Um, humans, we don't like change in general. So why why did we um, why did we see that change happen? Yeah. So so to summarize very quickly what what we've announced in the last couple of months. Uh, we introduced a change to the way how our licenses work, and, and it breaks down into two things. Firstly, we want to continue to offer uh, a, a perpetual license product, uh, which is a product that is incredibly popular with Capture One, and it, and it has a significant market and a significant audience. And we also wanted to uh, improve the offer that we have for, uh, for uh, subscribers. Uh, and uh, so uh, effectively, what that the, the, the reason why we wanted to do that is because uh, our development practices over the last couple of years have changed very, very substantially. And this is, this is something that follows uh, a very, very long period of development uh, in, in the software industry, where uh, increasingly companies like us, we want to ship software uh, as soon as it is available, ship innovation as soon as it is ready for customers uh, to use, and, and therefore improve the experience, uh, improve the value that we create for our customers, improve the benefits that we deliver for customers. And the other thing that we have been doing over the last couple of years is that we expanded our platforms from Mac and Windows to also include uh, cloud uh, and, and iOS. So today we develop software across a greater diversity of platforms than we ever have. And we do that on a continuous basis. So the changes that we announced, what they do is that they respond to, uh, uh, firstly, we wanted to continue to keep and offer uh, a perpetual license product and a perpetual license offering uh, for customers that have that preference and want to purchase Capture One uh, in that way, while at the same time uh, making sure that we can continue to innovate and ship software and deliver new features and new innovation as rapidly as we can across this greater diversity of platforms. And our belief is that we have ar arrived at something that is uh, an incredibly compelling proposition because, you know, on the one hand, you can choose a perpetual license or you can choose a subscription. And also, when you choose a perpetual license, you know exactly what it is that you're getting. So, you know, you can assess the software that is right in front of you and you can decide, yeah, like these are the tools and these are the features. This is exactly what I need. And you can continue to use that, that perpetual license for as long as your operating system environment and your hardware uh, is supported by it. Uh, or you can choose to be a subscriber. And now we have included an off-ramp. So there's a, there's a really elegant way how if at some point in the future you decide, you know what, I need to move off from my subscription or I need to cease uh, this subscription, there's a really elegant way to continue to use Capture One uh, on the basis of a perpetual license. So we, we believe that we've managed to combine um, our development process and, uh, you know, the, the, the way how in general customers expect to get uh, software uh, today uh, with a great value proposition in terms of what are the payment models that our customers can choose from. And so, so just almost to, to clarify on, on very specific points. So, number one, perpetual licenses are staying. That's that's yes, sort of a, a given number one. So there is. And I'm, I'm very conscious that many companies have said this in the in the past and whatever else. But as it stands, there is no plan to end perpetual licenses from your perspective. No, no, there isn't. Uh, we. Uh, we, in fact, we have built it into the the off ramp for for subscribers. Yeah. Uh, so it is it is a product that uh, it, you know it it has a place. It, it plays a role in the in the offering that we bring to market. Yeah, and and then so I'll, I'll come on to um, something sort of linked to that in a second. But the other one is that off ramp. Um, presumably, all of the loyalty years, as it were. So obviously, there's a discount that's that's on there. Is that from when the person started subscribing or is it from this february um no no months? we are like we are honoring the history that right. that subscribers have with uh with capture one cool okay so the, i guess um, one thing i'm going to sort of touch on because it's in part the next question as a bit as a bit of a lead up um that perpetual license thing also is in part because obviously the professionals um, or the you know the commercial studios and all that sort of stuff, a lot of them rely on perpetual licenses um, because a lot of their environments are about keep it um, sort of stable. So that kind of leads us on to um, one question, which is kind of fun, which is do Capture One want 
enthusiasts and amateurs as users. Um, and to quote, it feels like they no longer do now that they've increased or now they've got their increased numbers. So yeah, straight from the horse's mouth. Um, what's what's the what's the target, as it were, for customers? Yeah. So um, so Capture One, as it stands today, we have a quarter of a million users, and it's a it's a mix of photographers with a, you know many different purposes, also many different disciplines, and many different countries uh, worldwide. Uh, and uh, the reality is, like, look, we as a as a team and as a company that is incredibly passionate about photography and uh, and you know everything that we can do with software for the discipline we welcome any anyone who shares the same love and interest in in photography that 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 we have uh, so we don't look at the world as you know discriminating against one particular group or another like we we embrace that you know photography is is is, is an incredibly uh, diverse space and diverse industry uh, and we want to, you know, we want to make sure that we build a, a product that is attractive and that solves problems for for photographers across, you know, many different disciplines and needs. Having said all of that, um, it is also true that in our development process, we spend uh, our time very, very focused on what are the problems that we can solve for uh, professionals, and uh, and uh, there's a variety of different things that we work on that include things like image and color quality, it includes things like camera connectivity, it includes things like efficiency uh, and collaboration. Uh, and, um, and also we, we think about, uh, you know, how do we incorporate all of the different uh, technology waves that have happened over the last few years that include, uh, you know, the evolution of uh, operating systems, but also mobile and cloud and uh, AI now, of course, and also things like, uh, you know, uh, vertical integration of architectures, like what Apple has done with, uh, with their, with their uh, archi hardware architecture. Uh, and our belief is that if we approach our development this way, we're solving for the highest possible bar for photography. So once we have solved for the problems that professionals and that Digitex uh, have and, and their clients and, their, and, their, and the people that work with them in the, in the photography workflow, we believe that we have created a compelling solution uh, that is attractive for photographers in all walks of life. Oh, okay. So almost if, if my takeaway from that would be, um, so it, is Capture One targeted towards amateurs? Actually, no. Um, it's it's targeted towards professional users, but the beauty of it is that anyone, amateur, hobbyist from from ground up, can get the or can take the advantage of all of the stuff that's designed um, for that sort of upper level. Um, yeah, it is it is definitely developed for the for the needs uh, in terms of tools and reliability and speed uh, that a professional uh, or or someone who works professionally uh, will have. Uh, and then, you know, like we, we also recognize that everyone in photography, everyone starts from somewhere. Uh, and we want to make sure that, you know, we, that, that people are aware and they know about Capture One as soon as they start to develop an interest in photography and that they uh, can appreciate, like, what are the kind of tasks and what are the kind of problems that Capture One will help them uh, solve and what are the kind of opportunities that Capture One uh, creates uh, for them. Uh, and, and, you know, so, so we, you know, we, we, of course, we invest a lot in, in, the, in the development of the, of the software. And now we also invest a lot in things like, okay, so how do we, you know, how do we advertise ourselves and, and how do we communicate with the external world and, and drive awareness about Capture One? Also, how do we uh, interact with uh, institutions like schools and uh, communities? And also, how do we interact with other uh, entities in the, in other players in the, in the industry, whether they are uh, manufacturers or other software companies? Uh, so, you know, like we, we, we look at the world in a very, very comprehensive way. Uh, but our product and our development process it starts from the perspective of like let's let's stay very very focused let's zoom into how do we make sure that we meet the bar uh for uh, a professional uh as a mechanism to make sure that we have cleared that highest possible bar so huh, 
rather rather serendipitously i think that's the word okay um so let's get some like, there's a couple of live questions that we, i want to pull in um for those of you that are alive if it looks like i've skipped over you i haven't um we've flagged them it's just that there are some that are, are relevant now and there are some that we'll come on to later so First one, um, given what you've just said, so if targeted for the pros, when will the asset management portion be as world class as the rest of the program? So um, one one of the things that we recognize in in photography is that um, it's an incredibly rich uh, industry ecosystem, and um, w one of the things that I have come to recognize in you know in my conversations with uh, you know dozens and dozens of photographers over the last couple of years is that they always bring many, many different tools uh, in their in their toolkit. Um, you know, I, I always use this metaphor with the team, which is like, think about a photographer's bag and think about like all of the different things that are in there. Think about the devices and all of the different software that, that they have in there. So the, the problems that we're solving right now are, you know, firstly, how do we cement uh, our industry leading technology in image quality and uh, camera connectivity and that that's kind of the foundation of uh, of capture one and then there's a there's a bunch of new problems that uh, we are we are solving and that we you know we, we keep digging into which is how do we bring uh, more and more efficiency into the into the photography uh, workflow and there's a, a number of different tools that that were used that were building to 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 deliver that and then how do we do that across multiple devices? So like one of our core beliefs is that the photography workflow uh, has become a, a multi-device uh, experience. Uh, and, and that, you know, when you, when you use multiple devices in a, in a, in a flexible way, uh, it, it basically gives you efficiency and it gives you the, the ability to, to get from uh, shutter click to, to final image uh, as quickly uh, as possible. So, so those are the choices that that we have made, and you know we know that there's you know a huge number of other opportunities out there for things that we could be doing, uh, but you know for now we have decided to focus the company on these things. Uh, and then the other decision that we made was, look, because the ecosystem is so rich, why don't we establish the ability to have partnerships and to have dialogue and to create compatibility with uh, many other tools in the in the market? And you know, you you can expect that we will keep uh, doing that. Cool. So uh, interesting. Um, let me just uh, remove that one on there. So one of the questions that was sent in prior, now that you've mentioned partnerships, so you opened the gateway to that, not me. Um, let's have a look. So is there any scope for Capture One? And, and actually thinking in terms of the um, asset management piece, the cataloging bit, but as well as other stuff. So is there any scope for Capture One to introduce their own or buy partner with someone like Affinity for the pixel editing side of things in future? Uh, and I'll quote the person, it's annoying to need an Adobe subscription as well, um, which yeah. you know, hands up, I, I'm in the same place. If we edit stuff, um, the pixel editing is always done outside of Capture One. So touching on what you just said, you know, relating to the full scope of from asset management all the way through to the final sort of finishing touches capture one sits in a very very um, small slice of that at the moment is there scope to either expand or to partner or what, what's the thinking so uh so we're not working on a pixel editor uh, uh right now um but we are very very open for business and i i i spend you know a significant amount of my time traveling and, and speaking to other players in the in the ecosystem and we would we would definitely want to make sure that it's easier for uh, for photographers to be able to work across the entirety of their workflow recognizing that sometimes to navigate the entirety of that workflow um, they will need to use a, a variety of, uh, of different tools and uh, I mean like my 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 candid, my very, very honest assessment of the of the photography industry is that it's incredibly unlikely that there will be one tool to rule them all. I think that you know, as as, as far as I can see, it's a it's a fragmented industry. Uh, some companies have chosen to be very, very specialized on you know one very single thing, and they do it exceptionally well. Uh, other companies have a you know have a greater breadth uh, of, uh, of of solutions. And, and tools, uh, but still there are spaces that will be occupied by some other um, uh, player in the ecosystem. 
Uh, and, and that's the way how we play. Like the way how we play is like we look at the at the at the industry. We look at what what are you know wh where is the industry going? Where is technology going? What are the needs of photographers today? What do we think the needs of photographers are going to be uh, in the future? And what role can Capture One play uh, in in that landscape? And sometimes the role is going to be okay. We're going to build this, and we're gonna we're gonna build something that is great. And sometimes the role is going to be, you know what, we're going to go and talk to this um, other uh, player in the ecosystem and, we, you know, we will establish a, a relationship. So, so my sort of and summary we, from that is potentially um, there are partnerships that may come up in future. For, for um, sure. And, and look, uh, the, 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 the main takeaway is like, look, we as a, as, a, as a company, we have taken the attitude of being very, very open to, to partnerships. And we have a, a track record. We have a history of having very successful relationships in particular with uh, with camera manufacturers uh and uh and right now we're working very actively to extend that into other into other parts of the industry right so i think um in terms of live questions that probably answers tim's which is um are there any plans for better plug-in integration with affinity so while it may not be an active development you know certainly the or the direction that you're talking about is exactly. absolutely where something can plug in then why wouldn't we sort of thing yeah that's right that's right so talking on that let's um let's take a bit of a it's a slightly loaded question i will warn you um but do you see ai as a threat to photography creativity and photographers rights so to give people the background i know where this came from because I, I got the the full email um so there have been recently um some launches of ai software that you know, can strip out watermarks, can upscale um, other people's images and all that sort of stuff. And there's there's the ongoing debate about things like uh, Mid Journey, where it's taking, as they put it, inspiration from other photographers and, and creating new stuff. So, you know, Capture One as it stands right now is, so I would say it feels like you've got a sort of toe in the water with AI, but it's not necessarily fully embedded. So are we seeing that from your perspective as something to be um, cherished and, and grown or something that we need to keep at arm's length? Um, yeah. Yeah. So um, look, I, I'll, I'll step back for, for a second because I, I think that one of the benefits of having had a quite a long career uh, in technology and having lived through very significant change uh, in, in industries is that uh, my, my personal attitude and, and the way how I choose to lead Capture One is, is twofold. So, so firstly, looking at technology and looking at the opportunities that it, it creates for us to uh, you know, serve our customers better, for us to uh, innovate, uh, and also accepting that as technologists, we have to make responsible use uh, of that technology because and, and this is one of the things that ties together what we were talking about previously, which is um, we feel a great sense of responsibility for you know the hundreds of thousands of people uh, for whom Capture One is a critical part of their process, and very very often their process is a business. Uh, so so we, we we take very very seriously that you know we we look at technology we see the opportunities and at the same time i believe that as technologists we have to make uh, responsible uh, use uh, of it um and and I, I i have a very very strong again attitude that um look resisting change when it comes to these technology waves it, it is futile like i've i've literally lived you know like i'm i'm old enough to remember when e-commerce was not conducted on mobile phones and i'm old enough to remember when you know companies large technology companies needed to have their own data centers and and you know like we, we i i have lived through all of these transformations and seen how when companies and also seen how you know, when services are delivered in a better way to, to customers, ultimately, that is what they want. It resets their expectations about, uh, you know, how they should be served. And the companies that make, you know, that are intelligent about how they use these, these technologies are ultimately the ones that succeed. So you're right. Like, we have taken a, a very specific point of view about how do we incorporate AI models and AI tools uh, into Capture One. Which is incredibly respectful of, uh, you know, privacy and incredibly respectful of the 
work that the photographer is conducting uh, with uh, with their you know the, in, inside of our tools. But at the same time, we believe that it helps them be more efficient, be faster, be much more effective. Uh, and and this, is, this is, you know, constantly the balance that we're trying to achieve is, you know, let's make sure that we do something that is helpful, that it's useful, and that at, same, at the same time, it, 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 you know, it, it protects the boundaries and that we, we continue to behave as a, as a company of high integrity. So, so not a threat, but something to be managed, <laughs> I, I guess. Correct. The, and the it's, some, it's something to be embraced. And, uh, you know, uh, as, as an industry, like, you know, you know, like one of the things that I think about is, you know, photography is a photography has existed for a couple hundred years. Yeah. And, you, you know, like you can see like all of the different changes that have happened in photography over that period. And, and but at, at the very, very center of it, the photo, the photograph, it still exists. So that so that that human need for like capturing a moment and and capturing a memory and creating something beautiful like you know like that's what's at the center of, of photography right. uh, and the technology will continue to evolve around it um, yeah. you know look capture one like this year is going to be the 25th anniversary of, of capture one and uh, at our kickoff at our company kickoff last week we reviewed like you know where, where did this company start and like it, it is it is an incredible story uh and at the same time part of that story has been a story of uh evolving and constantly changing and adapting and embracing new technologies but with a with a very very certain mission that you know we can we can help uh, photographers do their best work um, so I'm going to go to. There's a couple of people online um, who have a very specific need, but it's a it's a broader thing because I know certainly from the questions we got quite a few. So um, JD's just mentioned uh, you. This is a little while back. Um, you mentioned the hardware and software integration like Apple, but the Phase One digital bats cannot tether to iPads. Um, you've just eliminated the integration statement, um, and then followed up by Ian, who's just talked about. Um, the fact that since uh, 2007, the phase one cameras have got a lot better, but the software in relation to phase one cameras um, maybe hasn't. And then we had a wider question, uh, which I'll put up, which is probably the, the sort of summary of that, which is it feels like phase one and capture one have become too far separated. So for those that don't know, some time ago, um, phase one and capture one um, split into completely um, different companies from a from a management perspective, um, and things like iPad didn't cover um, the Phase One cameras to begin with, and and so on. So, um, to to paraphrase, um, can we get Mummy and Daddy talking again a little bit? Uh, <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, I mean, the, the 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 truth is, um, Capture One and Phase One, we have we have an excellent relationship and i mean paul you've you've yeah. been to our, our office I'm, here i'm in both camps so yeah exactly and uh you know like we we are we are two separate companies and we've got separate offices but we share a reception area and we share a cafeteria which also means that you know we we speak to each other quite often we have lunch together i i have a great relationship with henrik hawkinson who's the who's the ceo of, uh, of phase one and uh, our our teams constantly collaborate uh with each other uh and you know, specifically when it when it comes to iPad, like I'm very pleased to share that uh, there will be a release of uh, an update to to iPad in the next uh, few weeks that will include um, uh, tethering for Phase One uh, cameras, and it's something that you know it 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 both manifests. You know, firstly, the our, our status as an independent company. We, you know, we released uh, the iPad app for the benefit of you know, many, many photographers across many, many different brands. And at the same time, we were working shoulder to shoulder with uh, with the phase one team to make sure that phase one cameras and phase one backs were also um, uh, supported. And, uh, and, and you know, like both things were happening uh, in parallel and, you know, both things can be true at, at the same time that, you know, we, we, we will innovate and we will ship and we will, we will continue to improve our software, and at the same time, we will work uh, very closely with the with the Phase One team to make sure that we, um, you know, that we continue to collaborate effectively. I think so. On on the iPad thing, just almost to, to paraphrase that, the sense that I got was it was a lot more difficult than anyone expected it to be to get um, to get that to to work. Um, so that it's by the sound of it, on the cusp of it, and so to. Where are we? To JD's point, um, you know, as a phase one user, the inability to tether to iPads that has to be solved. We well, heard it here; it has been. 
Um, yeah, 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 for sure. So, so I mean, look, phase one cameras are incredible pieces of equipment with incredible uh, technology in them. Uh, and, and some of it is proprietary. So yeah, like we had to like sit down with the with the phase one, including like some of the connectivity elements. So we had to like sit down with the with the phase one team and, and work together until we found, uh, you know, something that works. Also, you know, just just keeping in mind that, you know, one of our promises is reliability and speed and stability of those connections right and you know in in a platform like uh, like an, like an ipad ios so yeah like we had to work very very closely together to make sure that we were meeting the bar and at the same time um you know making the best use of the technology that we have built and the technology that they built yeah cool. um so i'm going to put a um a there's, there's a few people that have been asking the similar thing. Um, so just to set an expectation, I'm not sure you will have necessarily the answer for this live, um, as it were, right now. But um, it's basically, uh, it's, there seems to be a sort of theme coming through, talking about, uh, if I can just pull a couple up, so about subscriptions, um, being able to use offline, which actually I think it is possible to do. It's just it, it pings back every now and then. I'm, I'm not sure um, whether that's causing people problems. But um, the issue around um, recognizing, to quote, loyalty for perpetual user licenses. Um, so uh, let's use Rick's because it, it's one of a few um, of the, the similar sort of um, vein, which is, is it possible to have those perpetual users um, recognized in loyalty terms, not just the subscribers, which is the current um, plan for the licensing model? Yeah, look, when we, we looked at many different alternatives and many different options about how to, you know, how to bring to market our new, our new payment options. Uh, and uh, our, our belief is that um, for someone who, needs to update regularly for you know any variety of different uh reasons uh the best value proposition is having a subscription and a subscription with an off-ramp which is you know it's it's a it's a it's a very particular value proposition that we have brought uh to the, to the market with uh with capture one we we think that it helps us bridge between you know, the folks that think, well, look, if I have a subscription and then at the end of that, what happened? It's like, well, you know, there's a there's a very, very uh, elegant off ramp. Uh, so that that is the way how we squared that circle, you know, like let's, uh, you know, let's have a, a licensed product, but it, let's also have a subscription product, which gives you access to all the updates and all the changes and all the camera support, et cetera. But also let's make sure that at the end of that subscription, uh, there's a really elegant way to to off ramp is if that's what a what a customer chooses to do. So, so to paraphrase, no, <laughs> in in terms of the perpetual thing, but but that's the rationale, which is if you are a perpetual license holder that is upgrading every single year, then actually you are better off in in financial terms switching across the subscription than taking the off ramp option, which means you do end up with a perpetual license at the end if you need to depart from that yeah. that program. Yeah, because like what what I what I what we heard from our customers was look, the problem with subscriptions is that there is a moment when that subscription ends and then then what? Like what yeah. do we do next? Like we said like well, that's that sounds like a problem that we can solve. Sure. Uh random one. Here you go. What would you suggest to someone if they want to join your team? So I think that's Daniel's uh, pitch for a job. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Look, we've we've been hiring very, very, uh, you know, in a, in a, we've been hiring a lot over the last uh, couple of years uh, across a you know huge variety of disciplines. When uh, when the company separated from Phase One, um, it was basically an engineering uh, and product uh, team, and we we built out all of the marketing and and commercial and also the, the corporate uh, functions. So like, look, I. I Without knowing specifically what your specialty area uh, is, uh, Daniel, like we we keep hiring, we keep uh, expanding uh, the, the team, and um, and then alignment with our with our values. Like we as a as a as a company, you know, one of the real privileges of, of leading Capture One has been, you know, we we do have a business that had a product that has been running for 25 years, and it has changed a lot during that time. But it is it is an established product. It's a successful product. Uh, and at the same time, when the when the company was separated from phase one, it meant that we had to build a lot of the company uh, around it. Uh, so, you know, in that sense, it, it feels a lot like a 
startup uh, environment. You know, like people are, there's a huge amount of familiarity between people. People know each other very well. It's a very empowering environment. So it's an environment where people are expected to pick up the ball and run with it and, and make decisions and take risks. Um, and it's also an environment where, you know, we, we, we operate in such a way that, you know, we, we look at what we're doing, we look at the results, and then we make decisions about in what direction we, we, we're going to take our, our plan. So, you know, we have a long-term strategy, but we also accept that, you know, we, when you're trying to chase a North Star, like there might be uh, slight changes in angles that you have to make. So, um, so yeah, and, and it's, a, it's a very, very international uh, environment as well. So we have about 40 nationalities represented in 175 uh, people. Wow. Um, so back on to, um, I guess, the, the sort of features, and we'll, we'll touch on roadmap stuff in a bit as well. Um, let's just pick up. So a couple, again, a couple of people live have talked about this in terms of the, the basics, as it were, but I'll just... I'm going to pull up two um, questions just because I think the answer is probably going to be um, able to cover both. So the first being, while it's great to see new features being launched, why haven't the basics like noise reduction, sharpening and masking, AI coming up there, um, kept up with other software? Um, and then the second one, slightly more prickly, <laughs> um, unfinished features. So why are the developers allowed to stop work on a product that still needs work and or release them before they're complete? So the reference they're using is... HDR, panorama, um, and culling. So the impression that, that some people have got is that they're they're being released before ready. Um, and I've just seen a, a couple of comments from from people like Mark on online now saying, you know, happy with the subscription as long as I'm not just a beta tester um, as as it goes on. Yeah. So um, so the the way how we work is we will continuously release new features and new tools and what our, our motivation is to release them as soon as we can see that it will create value for a large population of our users or non-users. Maybe it can attract uh, users from other software to, to, to capture one. Um, and, you know, some of the tools that you, you that are mentioned in, in, in the questions, like we, we have had tremendously favorable feedback from, uh, you know, some of our users and, and photographers. And at the same time, we recognize that for, you know, for some of those features, there might be tools that are highly specialized that do just one thing and that might go, you know, a lot deeper into, into that particular area. Uh, and we're constantly balancing between, okay, so we've released this thing, it's creating value for a lot of photographers. Uh, and then in some cases, we, we can see that if we continue to invest and we continue to improve, um, uh, you know, we can we can reach a greater market or we can make it even more appealing. Uh, so, so, you know, we're, we're, our teams are always balancing those two things. Like the, the, the question is, is very precise in that, you know, we release things when we release them. Uh, we know that they are creating value. Uh, and when we can see that by us, by virtue of us investing more time and more development into a certain feature, the, the scale of the market that can be reached uh, is, is significant, uh, we will continue to do that. Or if we believe that there is a, you know, a significant gain to be made for, for a large group of, of customers. So for example, you know, smart adjustments and culling, which you know, we just released with a Capture 123 in, in, in December, uh, are two of the areas where we're right now making significant investments into because we see that you know, they're, they're incredibly promising in terms of how much they can help uh, photographers navigate their workflow uh, really, really um, efficiently. So um, because it's the gift that keeps on giving um, this licensing thing, we are going to just touch back on it. Uh, we've just seen a couple of people um, asking um, similar stuff. So I'm going to cover because I think this will cover um, a lot of the questions um, from someone. I think it was Mike sent this in earlier. Anyway, um, so we're aware you are so this actually goes back to the whole um, premise of people's concerns um, where it, with uh, any change to licensing so we're aware you're currently owned by a private equity group axel um given the changes announced recently to licensing what's to stop capture one changing its mind again if and when that uh, investor exits and then a follow-up one similar vein uh, what happens to subscribers if capture one were to disappear um so it's yeah, no one plans on companies disappearing, but you know, fact is they do from time to time. Um, so I think there's a there's an underlying sort of sense of of unease of what what happens if. Um, so yeah, your your thoughts. Yeah. So so yes, uh, the, your your uh, your community member is correct. Like we're a private equity owned uh, business. 
uh, and you know, uh, the, the, there's a lot of stuff to say about private equity, but one of the things that uh, is true about uh, private equity environments is that they allow, it, it, it creates uh, an environment which allows us to think quite long-term about you know, how do we create a sustainable uh, and an enduring company. And ultimately, that is our mission, that is our purpose. So when Capture One was established as an independent company, it's because there's a strategy that says like, look, as an, if, if, if Capture One becomes an enduring independent brand and company, then that is you know, effectively, it's a, it's a much more valuable, it's a much more successful company. Uh, we have a 25 year history uh, behind us. Uh, we've, you know, we're financially, you know, we're growing, we're growing our team, we're a profitable company, uh, we're a well-run professional operation. Uh, there's a lot of things that, you know, we, we can and, and we will do better. So, you know, we're one of those environments that is, you know, we're a learning environment. We're constantly seeking to see like, okay, like how are we doing on this or on that and how could we do better? Um, and and that, is, that is our plan. Our plan is to, you know, uh, one, one of the things that we talk about is, you know, what will happen in, you know, what will Capture One look like in 10 years, in 20 years, in, in 30 years? And, and all of that ties into like, you know, what do we think photography is going to look like and how can we best serve photographers? So that, that is our plan. Our plan is to, you know, endure and, and, uh, and, uh, and be, you know, a brand and a company that is um, uh, a meaningful part of the, of the photography ecosystem. And that, and that is really one of the things that I have personally most enjoyed about this role is, Wherever I go, knocking doors, and you know, tying back to this point about partnerships, uh, you know, everyone always wants to talk to Capture One, and like sometimes there's a conversation to be had. Sometimes it feels much more social, uh, but either way, like we have a we have a status in the in the industry, and it's something that we want to protect and perpetuate. So, almost to, to go very pointed with that, then. So absolutely obviously the, the plan is um that it would be uh, something that grows rather than shrinks but in terms of the internal decision making if i go back to where are we this question which was the the sort of changing its mind again so i think just to clarify a lot of um perpetual license holders were worried about moving to subscription on the basis that right now there's a loyalty off ramp as it were um what what's to stop that being changed but to, from what i'm hearing there is that the plan isn't to change that the, the plan is that that yeah. will, will always be in place for those users that that need it as it were yeah there's there's no plan to, i mean we, we literally just announced it and we're, we haven't even introduced it for <laughs> till, till for another couple of weeks and um and you know as a as a company one of the things that we want to do is you know put this out in the market, create stability around this. So this becomes our stable offering. And that way we can shift our focus to, you know, the, the, the task of making photography better because, you know, like, of course that as, as, as every software company, we, you know, there's work that we need to do around pricing and around promotions and around, you know, what does our lineup look like? Uh, but the reality is that the core of our business and the core of our product is, you know, help you know empower photographers you know give tools to photographers that you know makes their work better that allows them to be more efficient so uh so no like we like th this is the plan this is what we're doing and we're moving on to um to other parts of the product um very very quick one um literally um, one answer because it's probably a, a um yes i know or no i don't um so steve when will you be supporting the Hasselblad x2d it's a very specific yeah, well, question that one <laughs> Yeah, it's it's it's, uh, it's it's incredibly specific. Look, we we have a long track record of having great uh, relationships with uh, with manufacturers, and you know we don't have any specific plans with uh, Hasselblad right now. But you know we are uh, we're very very open to the fact that you know like we 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 want to continue partnering with uh, with players uh, in the in the industry. And so actually what the reason for sort of pulling it up is it sort of leads us into the the wider question that was sent in, which was around. Um, feature requests and camera and lens support. So, how do I get? I love this. How do I get Capture One's attention? Um, maybe a little dance or something. I don't know. Um, yeah. When it comes to important things that are missing, the existing process seems to take forever. Yeah. So, so there, there's two things that I can share with you. Uh, so, the first one is uh, last year, late last year, we started to experiment with like, look, how can we start to share what we're doing with our customers? And actually we started with the camera support page. So we now have a camera support page that is very, very specific about like, look, 
these are the cameras that we're working on. And in fact, the only ones that are not included are the ones that we might be under NDA and they're non-disclosure agreements because sometimes we get equipment from manufacturers that hasn't even been announced or maybe the release date has not been announced. So, you know, we we, we don't communicate those externally, but we are working on, on, on supporting them. And, you know, that's what allows us with some cameras, it has allowed us to uh, offer support from the very day that they are released uh, to the market. And we really like that process. We really like the idea that we can give very clear insights about, look, here's, here's the kinds of things that you can expect from us. And one of the things that our team are working on and that will, you know, will be live in the next couple of months, if uh, we, we have acquired a completely new tool for feature requests. And it's a tool that will, uh, you know, allow uh, our customers to, you know, like see the features that they have requested and have some transparency about you know like where has that gone and which ones are we are we working on and the same is true for bugs so uh so we, we're, we're creating we're building tools that will also allow our customers you know to be able to see you know like this is this is a problem that i'm having with the software and like it has been acknowledged or recognized as a, as a bug and this is the work that is happening uh, around it so uh, so all of that is is part of the same thread which is like look how do we give our customers greater transparency into what are the things that we're working on so um from a rough idea so you've said that the feature or the camera one is already in place and then obviously yeah. that will that will spread so presumably that's a sort of this year horizon rather than five yeah, years sure. or, or ten years right yeah. okay yeah, so, yeah. And, and, uh, and and look we, we we have become much better at transparency so so you know like in the in the last uh, couple of years you know, we have programs like the alpha program and the beta program. Like I feel like iPad, we kind of like built it in the open. Like we invited mm -hmm. a bunch of people to collaborate with us and help us like build the first version uh, of the iPad. Uh, you know, we, we give significant pre-announcement of like, hey, here's the things that we're building and here's the things that you can expect in our, in our future uh, releases. Uh, and, and it's just one of those things where, you know, you can, you can become better at it and there's still more work that we can do. So like we are significantly investing in look every day, every week, every month, let's make sure that we become a little bit more transparent. And some of it is, you know, just internal process and we can fix that. Some of it is like, yeah, like sometimes we have to like get tools and systems and plug them into our website so that we can give that to uh, our customers and, and our community in a, in a structured and usable way. Um, so on, on that, point um there's a couple of there's a couple of live um questions but i think we're, i'm just going to run through these very quickly because i think you've actually just covered that so lawrence is asking you know will um will we see hdr pano merging in the future of capture one stitching and blending while they're shot in hdr so in theory if it's a feature request that that gets put in it will get assessed and then managed as part of the the stack of inbound um stuff same with uh rude saying you know will focus stacking um be a possible function um in the future so it's all part of that same um, same sort of process, and and it leads on actually to I, I love the way this is phrased. So, Catch One often mentioned they listen to the industry. I've never been asked, <laughs> despite being a customer for over a decade. So, who do you ask? Um, it feels like the developers work in an echo chamber. So, you know, yeah. touching on what you've just said, but also the the wider point of you know where do where do the ideas get gravity rather than just a, a simple request. Yeah, so you know we've got a quarter of a million users uh, at, at Capture One, and you know like like many com many software companies, we have a variety of different processes that we use to uh, you know have direct dialogue with uh, with our customers. So you know many of you might have experienced that uh, in some of the Facebook groups. Some of our product managers will show up and say, "Hey, we're looking for photographers of this type to interview or that type to have a conversation with them." We also do you know usability testing and, and panels. Uh, we also bring photographers into uh, um, you know our, our team events like our monthly all hands, but also last week we had a all company kickoff. We had a panel with uh, photographers and we had a studio photographer uh, at the event. Um, and you know we also have a you know like folks like you, Paul. You know you know we speak to you regularly. We have other uh, photographers that also create content uh, for us, uh, and they're always you know milling around in the in the office. So you know. By my estimation, like we, you know, just last year, we probably had about 250 or so direct conversations with uh, photographers. 
uh, throughout all of those uh, mechanisms. Uh, and then we also do, you know, things that are much broader, you know, things like surveys, you know, online surveys. And, um, you know, last year, by my estimation, we reached about 40,000 uh, photographers through our online surveys. Uh, so, you know, like it, it is a process of, you know, ongoing dialogue. Some of it is one to one and it can feel, you know, very intimate and then very like going deep into the process of one single individual. Some of it can be quite broad, you know, like things like online surveys and everything in, in, in between. Sure. Okay, so, uh, so and then I, I forget to mention that we also have a lot of photographers in house. So, uh, yeah. so. You know, in, in, in a way, uh, you know, one of the things that is really special about Capture One is that we have people inside of the box that will hold us accountable to when, you know, when we go, you know, massively off the reservation and say, like, look, actually, this is the way how conventionally a photographer would work. So why don't we talk about this? Yeah. Yeah. And actually, to, to testament to that, I got a I got a message from Alex earlier asking me a question about it. That new feature saying what do we think with this um so the, the process does work but or does work but as you say with um you know, a quarter of a million users um unfortunately it may not be that um everyone gets a direct, direct phone call o over time um but to that point then so you know um we, we talked about this um sort of earlier in terms of the, the feature stuff but the roadmap need and, and and i know there's a challenge here it's a balancing act between what can be shared and what can't but obviously the license change has prompted a lot of people to want to know what's the direction of features and and so on so is it possible to get a roadmap or is, is it something that has to remain internal or where where are we at so uh look we we will keep giving our customers and our users and our trialists great transparency about what are the things that we're, we're working on. And, you know, clearly as we get closer and closer to a release, like we will start to give like very detailed, very specific insights into, you know, exactly what is the feature or exactly what is the tool or exactly um, what is the improvement. Uh, I think that, you know, as a, as a customer of Capture One, what you can expect from us is uh, firstly, we will continue to invest in that bedrock of image quality, camera connectivity, performance. So like all of those like basics of, you know, what, what capture, what has made capture one, the incredible software that it is like, we will continue to invest in that. In addition to that, <clears throat> we're making very, very, uh, specific changes to, you know, the way how some of our tools work to make the, the process of navigating across the, the workflow much more efficient. So things like what we did with the smart adjustments and with uh, with faster culling. Um, and then in addition to that, we are bringing some of our technology uh, to many more devices. So, you know, like in, in particular, port, like one, one thing that was a, a huge step for us was porting uh, our image core, so our, our image pipeline and uh, our camera connectivity uh, capabilities, porting all of that to iOS. So having that on an iPad, like it's, it's, it's a really, really fascinating uh, experience and it, it makes for a really fascinating uh, tool. And you can imagine where, where we can take that in the future. Uh, and then, you know, knitting all of this together with cloud services. So, you know, we took a first stab at, um, at, at file transfer uh, from, the, from the iPad. And we really liked uh, what we saw there, and we liked the possibilities that that, that creates. So we're working on further developing uh, that knitting together of multiple devices uh, into the into the workflow. Uh, and so, so, you know, like we will we will continue to give great transparency into you know what are the things that we're working on, and as things become closer to being something that we see, oh, like this is something that we could release. Uh, then we will immediately put notice about that uh, to the market and we will start sharing dates and estimated dates, uh, et cetera. I think that the key thing I think that a lot of people are looking for is that um, that window or that horizon to, to be broadened from just sort of now um, to what's what's coming along. And, and just to, I want to pick up on one um, question that someone just put in. It's actually Roger. So a couple couple things. Uh, first off, Prasad is very happy that your feature request mechanism will give visibility and transparency. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd hurry up and do that one. Keep him happy. Um, 
But in terms of the roadmap and that sort of stuff, so Rogers you know, just made the point, it's disappointing that Raphael won't commit <laughs> to bringing basic features, noise reduction, sharpening down up to the, the level of the competition. So I don't think you haven't committed to it. It's just a case of it's maybe not or it hasn't been at the highest priority. And that, that process is an ongoing thing from what I can sort of assess. For, for sure. And, and the, look, the other thing is that um, the, at, at the core of what we do is we want Capture One. We believe Capture One is different. So, so what we have to do is we have to keep making sure that we provide uh, customers, photographers, we provide photographers with a distinctive set of tools that serves needs that they have. And um, uh, so, so, so that is what we work on. What we like, what we always try to balance is like, look, we could we could do this, uh, and uh, and you know maybe there are things that we could do better, we could do par uh, with competition, maybe we could do it at 80% of the way competition do it, or we can do this other thing, which is very distinctive and it's very unique, uh, and that it, it gives access, it gives photographer ac photographers access to a completely new world of photography and, uh, and locations and, and workflow efficiency. Uh, and what tends to happen is that we tend to go for, okay, like here are the things that we can do that are very, very unique and that will, will make a, a real, you know, will open a whole new doorway into a whole new world of possibilities for, for photographers. Yeah. Just, to, just to put my oar in, as it were, so remaining completely independent, you need to get noise reduction better. There you go. Okay. So, um, <laughs> so at some point in time, it'd be lovely to know when that's coming. Um, so in terms of timing, just to, to get everyone on the same page, um, we are over an hour now. Um, so we're probably going to wrap up. I've still got a load of other questions um, that are in here that we probably won't necessarily get to. Um, but I think, um, and I, I want to just end on one question um, specifically for Raphael, but for those people that have put questions in that we haven't got to, what I will do is forward them on to Raphael and where there's a, a, a sort of a view, because some of them are very similar to each other. So if we've got five or six things together, um, what we can do is put the response into the description of this video, um, which- Super, sort of very, happy to, very happy to, very um, happy to. So the final one, uh, final question for you for today, um, then you can go. Uh, where are we? There, because this is a fun one. Who is your target competition from your own view? And what size do you think or want Capture One to be in five years? So, I, I I have taken the point of view, and it, it's some it's the way how I have chosen to to lead Capture One. That uh, Capture One is a very very unique piece of software, and uh, the the thing that we have moved away from is thinking of us as, you know, a, a, a raw photo editor for Mac and Windows to thinking of ourselves as look, we're an ecosystem of products that helps photographers be you know, far more efficient, that you know, gives them the strengths of image quality and connectivity and helps them be incredibly efficient. And ultimately they can, you know, they can achieve their vision much faster than, than otherwise and do that in, in very distinctive ways. Uh, and it, it, the, the way how we have chosen to run the company is look, let's, um, let's incorporate into our thinking that photographers will always use multiple tools. And, um, and, and hence, that is why it's so important that we always shine a spotlight on when you want to accomplish this specific thing, this is the moment when you need to go and use uh, Capture One. And candidly, I think that some of the things that we're doing are incredibly different, are incredibly unique, and they, you know, they, they, they open many, many new possibilities for photographers, like some of the things around how do we bring some of the practices that are established uh, for studios uh, and that have given studio photographers great efficiency and great quality, how do we make, you know, how do we blow out the walls and make that available for you wherever you are? Uh, and uh, how, do we, how do we close the distance between uh, the photographer and all of the different people that are participating in, in that workflow? And how do we use, you know, tools like mobile devices and the cloud to make it possible for, uh, multiple people to be participating in that workflow and do it in a really efficient and a really effective way. And, and also in a way that um, really makes the work shine, that puts the work of the photographer right in the middle uh, of, the, of that spotlight. Uh, and I, I think that that is incredibly unique. And I think that ultimately, going back to your question about like, look, uh, 
uh, how, how do we make Capture One uh, an, an enduring uh, brand and an enduring company? It's because we are going to be very, very different to everything else that is out there. Uh, and we accept that, you know, like we will be part of a toolbox and we will play some specific roles in photography and we will we will work with others that will play other roles in, in photography. And that way we will keep uh, pushing the industry forward. And while I'm going to pick you up on one thing, while at the same time keeping the basic tools the best they can be. Um, For sure. Presumably, yeah. For sure. And then, you know, the, to the question of like, you know, what, what will I think Capture One will look like in five years? Look, look, I... I I'm incredibly optimistic about photography. Uh, you know, in the in the last couple of years, I've met photographers uh, across many different disciplines, in many different stages of their <clears throat> development uh, in their careers. Um, the you know creative industries are uh, exploding, and they're becoming a greater and greater part of uh, economies uh, worldwide, but most certainly in Europe and in the U.S. Uh, so I'm I'm incredibly optimistic about uh, the future uh, of photography, and I would love for more people to have Capture One as part of their toolkit. Uh, so we have a quarter of a million users today, and you know we'd love to have millions of users in five years' time. Sure. Cool. Right. Um, so as I say, we'll we'll pick up on any other um, remaining questions um, later on. I'll I'll try and put the answers and stuff in the, in the description um, following. I'll send them across to, to Raphael for, for a bit of a view. Um, but yeah, so thank you, Raphael, for your time. Um, that's taken quite thank a Thank you, Paul, for having me. You uh, you need to hurry up and get on. You've got a quarter of a million um, loyalty personal invitation things to write for every single customer, I think. Um, I just committed that, not you. Uh, Excellent. <laughs> but um, in, in broad terms, so um, thanks for... Well, answering those questions there, there may be a few that follow on for everyone that's on here live thank you for coming along um for those of you that want to do editing we're doing another live editing session next tuesday so the 7th um so everyone is welcome to that Raphael is welcome to that we can we can play with some I'd of his, to join. Um, his, his photos um but in between uh, now and then, um, everyone look after yourselves and we'll catch you either for the next one of these um, with another person from the industry or um, next week um, live online. Right. Cheers, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you so much, Paul. Thank you.